So after a massive week at work where I've not had a chance to get out and do my own thing, I thought I'd sit down and show you five of my film cameras that I've never ever shot. I bought them, looked at them, played with them, stuck them in the cupboard for another day. That day's getting closer, I need to shoot each of these five cameras. I thought I'd let you make a decision which camera I should shoot next. So I'll give you a quick overview of each of the cameras and then let you decide what I'm gonna do. Let's start off with this one. This is a camera that I've had quite a while, maybe 18 months, two years. I bought it, love playing with it, really fancy using it, never got around to it. It's a camera I'm gonna to have to think about, a camera that I can't just pick up and run out and get some photographs. I'm gonna to to put some thought into this one. So uh, basically it is an Aries Flex, or an Airs Flex, I'm not sure how to say it. Twin lens reflex camera from the 1950s and she is a thing of absolute beauty. It shoots 120 roll film, six by six frames, giving me 12 frames per roll of film. Now, the only downside to this camera that I can find so far, it's got two lenses, twin lens, go figure. The top lens is a viewing or composing lens, whereby you look through the waist level, find it, you'll focus it, compose it, and then the bottom lens, that is your actual taking lens. Now, listen to this. That has got an absolutely gorgeous shutter mechanism. Beautiful. It comes with an Olympus Zoico lens, 75 millimeter f 3.5. Cracking, cracking camera. So that's option number one. Option number two is the Minolta Hymatic 7. This is from 1963. It's a 35 millimeter rangefinder camera. Fixed Minolta Rocco 45 millimeter 1.8 lens, which is supposed to be absolutely outstanding quality. Very quiet, really quiet. That's it. It's got quite a, quite a noisy wind on, but the actual shutter, beautiful, very nice. Nice and stealthy for street work. All right, so that's option number two. Option number three is my latest little acquisition. This is a Canon AE-1 from 1976. They normally go for maybe four or $500, something like that with a lens. This one had no lens and a faulty, uh, actually non-functioning light meter. I'm not bothered about that, I can use a handheld meter or use the Sony 16 rule. But because of its little fault, I got this for $60. $60, I mean, come on, it's not worth not getting, $60. Because it had no lens, obviously, I had to get a lens. But, 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 17, 18 years ago, I'm cleaning the old office out and I dropped on this. This is a Canon FD lens, 50 millimeter, 1.8, in reasonably good condition. It's clean, no fungus, no haze, a little bit battered, a little bit dirty, a little bit worn, but it works, it works. It's the ideal lens for this camera. It just locks on there with this collar. And now, for $60, a free lens. <laughs> Happy days. Listen to this one. Bit of a mirror slap there. But, up to you guys. 35 millimeter SLR, beauty. All right, so this one. <laughs> now this one is one that I absolutely, oh, I lusted after this camera for so, so long. Finally got it. It is a Canon Canonet G3 QL17. It comes with what is supposed to be a fantastic 45 millimeter 1.7 lens, it's supposed to be tack sharp. One fault with it though, I was playing with it, I was itching to get some film into it and get out, just listen to the shutter first. Nice little quiet shutter, very stealthy for street work. Lovely, fault, it's got a fault on it. Basically with this camera, you lift up the rewind crank, pop it open and the back pops open like that. Then to close it, you shut it up, obviously, put the crank down, and that's supposed to be locked. But it's not, it's not locked, look, look, it's not. Ah, oh, man, it's frustrating. Now it's locked. But, unfortunately, it comes open so, so damned easily. And I'm obviously concerned that I stick some film in there, I get out shooting, the back door pops open and the film's ruined. So uh, I put it on the back burner, put it in the cupboard, and I thought another day. I've come up with a little solution. When I decide, or when you decide that I'm gonna shoot this camera, I'm gonna load it with film, and then I'll tape up the back door with gaffer tape, so we get no light leaks, and we get no back door malfunctions. Because at my age, the last thing I need is a back door malfunction, if you know what I mean. All right, so that is a good option. Beautiful, beautiful camera. Look, look, <laughs> I tell you, tell you. It's gonna kill me, is that one? Finally, Look at this one. Now this is a cracking little camera. This came in the original box. It's got all the relevant documentation with it and purchase receipt and guarantees and blah, 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 blah. Gorgeous little leather case. This is an Agfa Super Solonet from the 1950s and she's a cracking 35 millimeter rangefinder camera, but not just any rangefinder camera. Watch this. This is a 
folder. Look at that. Ho oh, ho! What an absolute diamond. It comes with an Agfa Solinar 50mm 3.5 lens. Beautiful. Now, obviously, with all these folders, you've got to be so careful when opening the back door. Don't let it spring open, uh, especially when you've got film in it. But just let it come open nice and gentle like that. Otherwise, if you open it too fast, it will create a vacuum inside and it will pull your film about all over the show. So that one is another cracking option of a camera that I cannot wait to shoot. Make a comment below, decide which camera you want me to shoot next week. Will it be the Aries Flex medium format camera, the Canon SLR, Minolta Hymatic 7, the Canon Canonet QL17 G3, blah, 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 blah. The Agfa Super Solonet. The ball is in your court. All right, guys. Thanks for watching, until next week, decide what I'm doing.